last year to recognize Small Business Month in October, CGLCC and TD Canada profiled a number of LGBT plus owned businesses across the country in a series of video interviews posted on cglcc.ca and shared across social media. A year later, we decided to catch up with each of the businesses to see how they have fared with the continuing impact of COVID-19. For our third interview, we have with us today Robert Sharp, owner of Out Adventures, a premier provider of small group LGBT holidays, cultural tours, and gay cruises. Robert, it's great to see you again a year on. Hi, Dale. Nice to see you as well. Thank you for having me back. Hope you're, hope you're keeping well. Um, so as a reminder for our viewers, um, Out Adventures has been planning small group escapes for our community since 2008. Tell us about how you got started with this business, Robert, and what motivated you to start your own travel company? Uh, well, my business partner and I, we felt there was something missing in the LGBT plus travel world, which at that time was really focused on super high-end luxury experiences. And I think while we all love shiny, nice things, um, we really felt there was an opportunity to uh, showcase a destination and its local businesses, and most importantly, the LGBT plus and queer communities, uh, and by hiring local guides and really focusing on a local experience. So uh, as much of uh, the money as we were spending as possible could stay in those communities. That's great, Robert. And, you know, the issues that LGBT plus travelers face, you know, they are different than other travelers. Certainly the research that CGLTC that we've conducted, um, you know, bears that true. Um, so I'm curious to know, what is it like, and tell us what it's like to go on a tour without adventures, and what sets your, uh, your company apart from other similar travel services? Well, you know, it's all about camaraderie. Uh, as LGBT plus people, we come out not once in our life, but often, you know, multiple times. And when we're traveling, it can be multiple times a day. And so we really focus on providing a environment where our guests can feel safe and feel comfortable um, being who they are, uh, holding their partner's ha hand where it's safe to do so. Um, and I say that because we, are, we don't shy away from visiting destinations that have uh, known to be less than welcoming to our community uh, because all of those destinations we feel have people, they have businesses that share our views. And if we can safely experience them, we feel we should by supporting those people and supporting those businesses um, to further their agenda. And I mean, quite frankly, the LGBT plus agenda. A year on, uh, Robert, it's hard to believe that it's been a year since, uh, since we last chatted. But, you know, wondering if you can tell us a bit about how has your business been impacted by the effects of COVID-19? <laughs> Well, where do I begin? Um, no, I mean, it, it, we've been drastically affected by the pandemic. Our team is uh, dramatically smaller than it was a year and a half ago. Uh, we just started running our first tours again in August. Uh, and that was, I mean, almost a year and a half from our last tour, which was in March of 2020. So uh, to say it's been a challenge is an understatement. Um, but I would like to think that, you know, we err on the side of caution, always protecting the well-being of our clients, both, you know, from their uh, health and safety from that perspective, but also financially. And, um, you know, we've, we've made some conservative decisions and it's been a little bit of a, a slow restart, but we're proud of that because, at the end of the day, uh, we don't want to run a trip or restart a trip until we feel it's really safe uh, to restart. And I'd like to think that that has done really well for us because although, you know, we are a year and a half into the pandemic, um, we just launched our 2023 tour calendar to clients and a number of trips sold out right out of the gate. Uh, and so we're incredibly thankful to those uh, those lo loyal clients, and we look forward to a slow and steady recovery. 
That's great. And great to hear that business is starting to tick up again. Robert, adapting uh, to the changes and the impacts of COVID-19 uh, is something that lots of businesses have had to deal with. So wondering if you can tell us about some of the ways you've had to adapt uh, to COVID-19. Um, well, I think a lot of it really has come down to our planning at this point. I mean, at the beginning, we had to adapt by basically ceasing uh, operations. And here we are now, and it's more about negotiating favorable terms uh, so that we can offer more favorable deposit policies to our clients to allow them to feel more comfortable uh, committing to trips. That's a, I mean, this was an industry um, that really focused on high non-refundable deposits, and it's been a complete 180 in the last year and a half um, to us providing so much flexibility uh, to build that confidence with our clients. And in addition, I mean, we now have to be experts on uh, COVID-19 infection rates and vaccine protocols and entry requirements, not only in the destinations we're visiting, but also in the home destinations of our clients, because everyone has to return home, of course. Uh, and it's an ever-changing landscape daily. Uh, so we have we have seen uh, or are seeing a heck of a lot more research uh, into into entry requirements and visa requirements and vaccination requirements than we ever did pre-pandemic. I was going to say you 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 kind of hit off all of the um, the kind of key words that have been used over the last year that we, we've all had to get used to, and you know with you know border restrictions starting to ease and mandatory hotel quarantine uh, ending in, in lots of countries across the world, and um, what does the future look like for the uh, for the industry and where is it going? I uh, I think only time will tell. Uh, so many industry professionals have tried to predict what the future will look like. Uh, and I think that many of us have been wrong to date, but it seems we're perhaps nearing uh, a corner here. And I do think that we'll see a lot more last minute planning uh, as people who are uncomfortable planning so far in advance are kind of waiting to see what happens in a destination and taking a look at where they feel it's safe uh, next month to travel. Um, But on the other hand, I think people are also planning much further into the future uh, because we think, okay, it's been a year and a half, maybe in another year and a half, it'll be safe to take that trip to Asia or to Africa. Um, And so I think it depends on on the consumer and the traveler and their level of comfort. Uh, But I do think that it's all going to be, uh, just like I said a few minutes ago, about knowing what are the restrictions, adapting to the restrictions in the destination countries, but also protecting ourselves as travelers. So we can't put all of this responsibility on uh, tour professionals and companies like Out Adventures, but travelers also need to, uh, to understand that there will always be a little bit of risk until this pandemic is over. Uh, And as much as companies like Out Adventures, we can minimize risk as much as possible, we'll never eliminate it. And so anyone who wants to plan travel really needs to keep that in mind, you know. Robert, I'm aware that TD is your bank. Um, So I'm curious to know, how has your financial institution helped you to weather the storm when it comes to managing the effects and the impacts of COVID-19 on your business? Sure. Uh, you know, TD has has always been there for Out Adventures uh, through their LGBTQ2 plus uh, business development managers who are checking in, it seems, every month or two asking how they can help. Um, and, you know, they, they're always interested in making connections and uh, introducing us to other professionals in the industry or, or uh, who they think we could partner with. Um, but also just making it so easy through the pandemic to access uh, some of the funding that was uh, guaranteed through the federal government. Uh, I don't think applying for uh, a loan has ever been as simple as it was in the uh, early stages of the pandemic through TD. And I think that uh, it's certainly helped us and we're incredibly grateful to TD for that. Well, that's great to hear, Robert. And lastly, you know, what advice would, uh, would you give to 
uh, consumers during this time who might be looking to travel and get back get back out there? Yeah, Dale, I think it's all about being flexible, uh, but also, as I just said, to understanding that there's a little responsibility that we all have to be aware of as travelers. And we all need to do a little bit of research, uh, protect ourselves through travel insurance, uh, and then also really having patience with tour companies, with hotels, with restaurants. I think we've all seen these businesses trying to ramp up with demand as of uh, recent. And it's tough for, for tour companies, for restaurants, for hotels operating on limited staff with new staff. And so consumers should really go into the, the experience of, of travel post-pandemic or during pandemic with that sense of flexibility and that extra little bit of understanding that service might not be exactly what it was pre-pandemic. It might not be as quick as it was, but knowing that we are all working as hard as we can to do the best we can to provide those magical experiences to travelers. Flexibility and patience. I think that is great advice to end it today. Robert, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. A year later, on behalf of CGLCC and TD, we would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, you know, share a bit about your story uh, and hopefully help to inspire fellow LGBT plus business owners all across Canada. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, stay well and stay safe. Thank you so much, Dale.